Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, or YouTube the Elmer for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I did an autopsy on some coax, and what I found is really interesting, and we'll look at that right after this. Calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. In a prior episode, we talked about um, velocity factor, and there are four parts to coax. There's a jacket, shield, dielectric, and center conductor, and that the electrons run on the surface of the center conductor and the inside of the shield, and the dielectric affects the velocity factor and loss of the coax. So if you have a foam dielectric, in it, it can have less loss than a polyethylene di dielectric. But what happens if there is some damage to the coax? I had some RG218 that showed some um, much greater than typical loss when I checked it with an NOVNA. And I thought instead of just throwing it in the trash that maybe I could recover the shield from that coax and use it as a ground strap. And um, here's that shield. Uh, this is um, slightly tarnished and I've split it open and you can see that there's been some water here. So the electrons are running on the inside of this. But here's what I found as I dug through the stuff. Now this turned out not to be all that hard to, to get off the, uh, the dielectric. The uh, length of cost I was dealing, dealing with was uh, uh, about 50 feet. I've got a coil up on the floor because I've got this uh, snake of stuff all over the place. And it's got some little burrs on it. Uh, so here's here's the stuff. And as I started out, I thought, man, this stuff doesn't look so good. And then I got to sections like this where it looked like a, a garden hose. It's just, uh, just black. Um, black with tarnish. And it's black on the inside. So, and it's bunches of it. So the electrons are running on the inside, and it's on my hands now, are running on the inside and um, rubbing, they're not only bumping up against the dielectric, they're having to deal with the, uh, the now the coating on the uh, coax. So likely when I measured the length of that, um, the velocity factor was probably off because it's probably greater than 0.66 due to the water intrusion. And the losses, they ended up being fairly large. So that's what happened with that coax. It got water in it. How, that coax had been laying on the ground out to a tower on, uh, on Wolf Mountain. Now the other thing is I measured uh, the losses in um, four lengths of coax. So from the radio room out to the tower, I have four lengths of coax and I have vacuum relays in the radio room and mechanical relays at the tower. And I can isolate each of those four runs and still connect to them. So I measured the losses with an nov a in RG8X, two lengths of RG218 and two lengths of RG213. Now the lengths of coax varied and I decided to make them uh, adjust the length, I did some cross multiplication for 100 feet. So the measurement then is 100 feet of coax at 30 megahertz. What are the losses? The RG8X measured about two dB loss. The RG218 when adjusted for its length, which was slightly long, measured 0.67, so less than a dB. The sort of crummy looking RG218 that looked like it had been through the war measured 0.8. The used RG213, which is relatively clean and the jacket looks really clean, measured 1.1 dB. And the new RG213 measured 1.04, roughly 1 dB. Now the efficiency then to convert the dB to efficiency, the RG8X, 30 megahertz, 100 feet, 63%. So if I put 100 watts into the coax, 
watts come out the other end. On the 218 at its uh, equivalent length of 100 feet, I'd lose 14 watts, so it's 86% efficient. The beat up RG218 had a loss of about 17%, so it was 83% efficient. The two lengths of RG213 measured about 78 or 79 percent efficient. So the difference in loss between the 0 .8, 0 .875 and the 0 .405 coax, one's roughly twice the diameter of the other, the difference is not great. But what happens when you get to 440? So the losses are relatively close at 30 megahertz they're going to be the separation in losses becomes much greater at 440 and I'm going to bring that up on the screen now. RG8X 100 feet 440 megahertz 15 percent efficient 85 percent loss. RG218 50 percent loss. RG213 68 percent loss. LMR 400, 46%. If you go to really big coax like um, 0.875, the loss is 17%. So there's a significant difference. If you go to the really big stuff, as a friend of mine did, the losses then become darn near zero, uh, like 5%. So at uh, as you go up in frequency, if you're going to do that, and you've got a, a relatively long run, the larger the diameter of the coax, generally speaking, the smaller the loss. For me, HF, 14 megahertz, um, I'll use the RG218, but uh, in switching between different lengths of coax and doing tests, uh, listening to um, friends of mine on, um, in Europe, I, I couldn't see or hear any difference. So that's the answer to the question about which coax am I going to use? Uh, was it worth the effort of putting the four runs into the, actually five runs into the attic? No, it wasn't. But I had them. I decided to go ahead and use them. So while I was up there, I, I put them all in place. All right. That's um, today's episode on velocity factor coax losses. I'm Jim, W6LG, your YouTube member for Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, thumbs down. Uh, please do subscribe. If I can get from, I'm roughly 30,000 subscribers right now. If I can get to 50,000, I get uh, uh, bonus payments for.